Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I wanted to give you an update on Lucian's case. Um, the search for Lucian continues. The Yakima Police Department is still looking for any information regarding the disappearance of five-year-old Lucian. If you were in the Sarge Hubbard Park, Yakima, I don't know what that is, or Yakima Humane Society areas on September 10th, 2022, between 6.45 p.m. and 8 p.m. and have any information, photos, videos during that time frame, please contact us at 509-575-6200 or ypd at yakimawa.gov. Um, I mean, I know what that word is. I just can't say it. I could try it, but I'm going to mess it up. I know I am. Ar arbitrary. Arbit uh, yeah. So uh, I'm going to take you to the next thing. Okay. So this next one here that I'm taking you to is a press conference um, or, or like an update, right? I don't know if it's technically a press conference, but it's an update, right? By police. So I'm going to play this for you. Good afternoon. It's October 27th. And as you're all aware, we have continually stated that we would provide updates on the missing Lucien Muniga case uh, should we get any new information. Unfortunately, after 47 days, six weeks, we just have no new information. Um, in a recent uh, meeting with the family because we are in constant contact with the family. They did ask that we could clarify some information and I'm happy to do so. Early in the investigation, uh, when we were providing updates to the community immediately after Lucian's disappearance, um, I was told that there was video of Lucian at the park. And after six weeks, I can tell you that an exhaustive search, there is no video of Lucian. In fact, what video evidence we have found and we have video evidence is where he wasn't. Uh, basically, it's video where you don't see Lucian. So the best the video can tell us is where he didn't go. Uh, we have very strong reason to believe Lucian was in the park and then he wasn't. And unfortunately, at this time, we still don't know where Lucian is, where he went, uh, how he's gone. Uh, it's it's an awful situation. It's uh, unique in that it just he's just gone. Um, we have made extreme efforts. I think the community is well aware of that. We continue to do that. We continue to investigate. Um, but we have no evidence of any kind that tells us what happened to Lucian, where he went, how he disappeared. I will tell you that we have said all along, and I continue to, to make it very clear that we have absolutely no evidence of foul play. Nothing has come to light to indicate that anybody is responsible for Lucian's uh, disappearance. Obviously, should we get information of that type, we will immediately follow up on it. And if we're able, we will inform the public of that information as well. I do want to tell, tell folks that uh, there's a lot of curiosity about this case and interest, which is good. Uh, but the flip side is there's a lot of things in law enforcement that we just can't share. Uh, we have an investigation. We have to protect that investigation. Um, anything that we get at this point until there's some resolution, we're not able to share. And that's to protect the potential case, to protect the privacy of the family, uh, to do the best we can uh, to serve the community. And I realize that for some people that's frustrating because they want to know more. Um, but what I can tell you is we will share what we're able to share uh, when we can share it. <clears throat> Finally, I, I just want to again say that the family asked us to do this video and I'm, I'm happy to do that for them. Um, it's just a horrible situation and uh, it's also extremely disappointing and saddening uh, what they've had to endure. Uh, attacks from around the country, people who don't know them or know anything about the case. Um, I, I, again, will say what I said the very first day and the second day is let's wrap our, ourselves around this family and support this family um, because it's just an awful situation. And of course, we all would like to have a resolution. Unfortunately, at this point, there's no way to know whether there will be a resolution. Um, so I would ask anyone who has any information, call 509-575-6200. You can also email us at ypd at yakimawa.gov. That'll be on this post as well. And I will say uh, one more time, we will update the community if we have information that's new that we can share. Um, we have no interest in uh, hiding information. That's not what we're trying to do. Uh, we, we feel an obligation to be transparent. I feel an obligation to be transparent. Unfortunately, there's just no information right now to share. So thanks for your support and understanding. Okay. So 
that was a video from the police. Now, that um, doesn't give a lot of new information, right? However, what it does do is let you know to, you know, um, not be so hard on the family. A lot of people have been really, really hard on this family. And there's been a lot of accusations going around. And it's really been difficult on them on top of what they're already going through. If they end up being responsible in the end, then then law enforcement's going to deal with them, right? So let me take you over here to a video. This was uh, put out by News Nation. States uh, missing. It's been more than six weeks since a four-year-old, I mean, we're going back and forth on each year, um, Lucian vanished from playground in Yakima, Washington, without a trace. His family spoke with us for the first time since. Please share and let's bring this little boy home. And so, yes, we are about to see the first interview, like legitimate, you're going to see him um, talking. Okay, so let's take a look. The charming laughter of a child made even sweeter because four-year-old Lucian Mungia is on the autism spectrum. He doesn't say much except when it comes to sea animals. He's so smart. He's funny. He can name, what, over 50, at least over 50 sea life. But the little boy who loved shark pajamas vanished on September 10th during a trip to the playground with his dad and siblings. Juan Mungia says he had to change his toddler's diaper. We had just got to the park. My kids are usually entertained with the slides for at least five to 10 minutes. It only took me like one minute to change her diaper. And in that one minute, he was gone. Police searched the park and surrounding areas. And we've had a sheriff search and rescue team, drones, we've had a dive team, uh, we've had bloodhounds, uh, obviously dozens and dozens of police officers. In a statement, police said they established Lucian left the playground alone, heading south and east. Unfortunately, there is a fast flowing river, pond, and a deep lake in that direction. Volunteer diver Dave Reynolds released this video showing the conditions in the pond. And so there's a lot of sediment and there's a lot of underwater debris to get caught up on. Um, and it gets very, very dark very quickly. Despite that, Reynolds thinks they searched the pond and lake well. With the amount of divers that have been in the bodies of water, yeah, I would say there's probably a 95 to a 99 percent chance that he's not there. Investigators have said there's no evidence of foul play, and the family's story has checked out. Police have even reacted to the wave of suspicion against the family on social media, fueled by their refusal to talk to the media. Just ask folks to just kind of uh, be patient. Uh, let's support the family, love the family. They're going through a horrible situation that none of us would want to endure. Juan Mungia says he simply hasn't wanted to take the time away from searching for his son. I haven't stopped searching. I've been searching this entire time. Searching and hoping for any sign of Lucian. Isn't that a cute video? So we got to hear the family speak, right? They talked. I don't know how that makes anybody feel. I don't know if it changes anybody's opinion or not. I I don't know. Um... I just hope that they find him. Um, however, I, while looking for this update, right, to kind of see where things are, to keep his name out there, I ran across something that's concerning. And, um, and so anyway, I want to bring it to your attention because it, it was uh, connected to him that it was found. So the search for Lucian uncovers an illegal underground bunker. I don't know if any of you have heard about this yet. Um, but here is one photo of the bunker. Looks um, pretty creepy, pretty gross. So it goes on to say, um, Yakima, Washington, family members of missing five-year-old Lucian continue to search and follow up on any lead that comes their way which is how his father and other searchers discovered an illegal underground bunker on Yakima County property. 
uh, quote, to get a tip that my son is being held in an underground bunker and then to actually find one like that, finding the existence of that bunker just kind of freaked us out, Lucian's father, Juan, said. Lucian disappeared September 10th during an outing with his family at Sarge Hubbard Park in Yakima. Juan said he and others discovered the bunker about two weeks ago between Keys Road and Yakima River. Juan said that they had previously found the remnants of an old bunker that was cleared up several years ago, but were not expecting to find one that was actually being used. Quote, we had scoured that area multiple times, and then we just happened to take another off path, Juan said. We ended up just coming across it, and we were just surprised just to find something like that. Juan and his family took pictures and videos, which they passed on to the county code enforcement officers. He said he sent them to the Yakima Police Department as well. The structure is about six feet deep and includes multiple rooms, a propane hookup, and a heater. It's obscured between, beneath heavy layers of dirt and layered tree branches. Juan said that they found nooses, weapons, scuba suits with holes cut out of them in inappropriate area, masked and assorted debris. He said that the whole thing felt creepy, but there are no sign of his little boy. Quote, we didn't find anything that was Lucian's, he said. We didn't find anything pointing towards him. Um, K-A-P-P K-V-E-W and I don't know how they actually say that station, right? But they reached out to Yakima Police Department Public Information Office um, what was her name? Uh, Yvette Inzu Inzuna who said I did check in with the detectives and they were aware that Lucian's dad had reported a homeless bunker of sorts. They looked into it, codes is handling, but it is not significant to Lucian's case. However, county officials said it is a significant problem for them because there's a little that they can do in these situations other than issue an eviction notice and take care of whatever is left behind. Quote, short term, there's not a whole lot we can do, Yakima County Water Resources Supervisor Nathan Paris said. It's kind of a little bit of rem of a remote spot here along the river. So what we're doing right now is we're just trying to keep it secure. Paris said there is a long-term project going on in the area that could help with removing its, the structure in the long term. But on its own, cleanup would be costly. Quote, we would guess anywhere upward of 3,000 to 4,000 easily or more, Paris said. This is at least the third illegal underground bunker they've had to deal with in this area, all allegedly built by the same man who's been living unho unhoused in the area for years. In 2018, the man was arrested after they discovered a large underground dwelling on Yakima Sportsman State Park. He pleaded guilty to second degree malice mischief and was sentenced to 90 days in jail. In court documents, the man reportedly told investigators that it only took him about a month to create the structure and he had been living in it for a while. According to court documents, the man also has multiple previous convictions for assault, lewd conduct, violating a protection order, trespassing, and other offenses dating back into the 1980s. Authorities said two years after the first bunker was discovered, January 2020, a second one was found in the area near Keys Road and the Yakima River. Again, he was evicted from the premise and the bunker was closed up. Now, with the discovery of the third bunker, Paris said there's really nothing in place to stop him from doing it again. Unfortunately, there is not, aside from posting notice and hoping at some point, they just try and find other resources and other shelter, Paris said. Building an underground shelter like this one violates a law regarding unauthorized use of county property, which carries a penalty of up to a $1,000 fine and 90 days in jail. But it's one the man alleged to have built these bunkers is unlikely to face. Quote, we can arrest the person, take him to jail. If the jail accepts him, great. Yakima County Sheriff spokesperson Casey Shilport, Shilp or I don't know, said he's going to be out within eight hours and he's going to go back to the place he was living because he doesn't have anywhere else to go. <clears throat> Casey said that 
creates a circular problem with no end to it and no clear solution in sight. That leaves the county with a problem that won't go away without some kind of change. I just want the public to know that there is an ex existence and there's nothing that anyone can really do about it, Juan said. Um, in the meantime, Juan and the rest of his family will continue to follow up on any new tips with the hope that one of them will pan out and help bring Lucian home. The family is offering a $10,000 reward for Lucian's safe return or for information directly resulting in a safe return. Anyone with information about Lucian's whereabouts should contact the Yakima Police Department at 509-575-6200. And so, like, I, I don't know, you guys. The fact that that man, sure, he may be, like, homeless, um, but the part about, let me find it. Uh, I obviously passed it, so that's great. Um, nooses, weapons, this part. Scuba suits with holes cut out of them in inappropriate areas. I mean, something's not right here at all. Okay, this is not good. This is really, really not good. It's not good. I mean, I, I don't know. It, could it be his own thing? Uh, maybe, 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 but I don't like the sound of it. I'm going to bring you guys over. There's um, some other photos here. And um, let me show you those. On this other page, they talked about it as well. And so there's a cute picture of Lucian. And then this photo here that they show of um, another, I don't know, this one's like in the ground here. I don't know what this is, if it's, it's the same one, same thing or what, but I don't know. Um, and then I wanted to talk about this um, just because we're talking about Yakima, right? Which is in Washington. Um, there's there's a big issue, and so since we're on the topic of, I mean, we've got Lucian that's gone missing, but there is a larger issue, and maybe if they had been able to get a grip on this issue, whatever is going on, something's going on. Okay, something something's going on. Then maybe something may not have happened to Lucian. I don't know what happened to him, right? So I'm not saying maybe he didn't run off and end up in maybe the river. So, you know, I'm not saying, right? Um, and same with these. I don't know about these cases either. Um, but let me just go over a couple of these really quick while we're here, just so that you guys um, are aware. And if you guys want to look into any of these deeper, please, please let me know and we could see if there's anything else on these. But 25 missing children from Washington. Do you recognize anyone? And we won't hit on every 25, okay? So we're not going to be here forever doing this. But um, it's every parent's worst nightmare. When children go missing from home, school, anywhere, fear sets in. Um, who took the child, teen, or adult? What happened? Please take a look at these missing children go going back to 1971. One of these kids could be your neighbor, a fellow coworker. Um, you know, so do you have any information on children? Um, now... This one, Hector, the reason that I want to stop on him is because I happen to see a theme not, that they're not all important, because they are. And like I said, I, I would like to be able to stop on all of them at some point and cover them. Um, but what I want to look at is just how many of these 25 are missing in 2021. This one's missing on August 18th of 2021. From Topinish, Topinish, Topinish. I, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Okay, I can't pronounce so many words. It's it's okay. Um, but he maybe with his older brother Gabriel. Hector is described as white, um, twelve years old, four foot eight, eighty pounds, brown eyes, black hair. Please call Yakima Police Department. Um, I don't know about him being white. Looking at this picture, I feel like the information might not be right, okay? So don't, let's not hold too much weight in the 
ethnicity, that they're, the race, right, that they're saying in any of this. But this is 2001. Next. <clears throat> um, you have Alyssa has been missing from Chinook, Washington, since August 21st of 2021. She is white. I believe that. 17 years old. Weighs 150. Five foot four. Brown eyes. Blonde hair. I would say her hair is more of a strawberry blonde. But she is white, so we've got that going, right? So I don't know, maybe anybody recognizes her. Um, but again, so that's a second, that's uh, 2021. Um, this one, Kayla. Kayla's been missing since September 15th of 2021 out of Spokane, Washington. Female, white, 5'4", 110 pounds, brown eyes, and brown hair. Okay, there's her photo. So that's our third one. Derek, missing since July 5th of 2021 from Spokane as well. White male, 17 years old, 5'4", 128 pounds, green eyes, brown hair. Contact Spokane Police Department. All right. So that's our fourth one. Abigail, missing from, yet again, Spokane since September 13th of 2021. Female, white, 15 years old, 5 foot, 115 pounds, hazel eyes, brown hair. Call Spokane Sheriff's Department. Right? That's our fifth. Um, Alanis has been missing since April 4th, 2021. From Fort Angels, Washington. She has two nicknames, Allie and Mario. She's American Indian, 16 years old, 5'4", 120 pounds, brown eyes, black hair. Contact the Fort Angels Police Department. Um, what are we at now? Seven? Is that six or seven? I don't know. That's terrible that I can't keep track. So this little one here, she is a 2020. She is in 2020. So I'll let you look at her. She's eight years old. Missing from Vancouver, Washington. Okay. Um, and Tom. Missing since April 26, 2021. Out of Bellevue, Washington. He's black, 14 years old, 5'8", 137 pounds, brown eyes, black hair. There he is. So now we're at either seven or eight because I lost track on that last one there. So we're at either seven or eight. Hopefully you guys are keeping track for me. Vil Vilma. Missing since February 4th of 2021. Tacoma, Washington. She's white, 14 years old, 5'4", 175 pounds, brown eyes, black hair. Contact Tacoma Police Department. So now we're on either eight or nine, right? Monique has been missing since May 21st, 2021 from... Again, another Spokane, Washington. She's black, 15 years old, 5'4", 125, brown eyes, black hair. Spokane County Sheriff, if you recognize her or know her. So, what is that, 9 or 10? Y'all, I'm losing track. The, I can't, the number is just too high. So now we get, this one is 2004. So we're somewhere up at 9 or 10. This one was another 2020. Right? Heaven has been missing since May 29th, 2021 from Spokane, Washington. Heaven is white, 16, 5'2", 144, brown eyes, brown hair. 
contact Spokane County Sheriff's Department. Now we're on either 10 or 11. I think, unless I just said that, but we're that's what I'm sticking with because I don't even know what number I'm on anymore. You guys, um, if you're seeing what I'm saying, there is something is the matter here. This one is um, a 92, 1992. There's something the matter here when there's 25 people on this list. We're already at 10 or 11. Alexander, missing since August 5th, 2021, from Everett, Washington. He's white, 14, 6 foot, 160, green eyes, blonde hair that's dyed blue. Contact the Snoqualmish County Sheriff Department. Um, so that's 11 or 12. Uh, Mejdi? 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 I don't know. Um, I'm sorry that I can't say her name. I'm so sorry. Uh, missing since October 18th, 2021, from Vancouver, Washington. Black, 15 years old, 5'6, 125, brown eyes, black hair. Contact Vancouver Police Department. So now we're on like 12 or 13. So we have reached the halfway of the 25 people. At least half of them have gone missing in 2021. And many of them, probably half of those, are out of Spokane, Washington. So Spokane has a problem, and the year of 2021 has a problem. Jacqueline, September 14th, 2021, from Camas, Washington. White, 16-year-old, 4'9", 160, brown eyes, blonde hair. Contact the... Uh, Camas Police Department. Camas. 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 Yeah. So I just wanted to go over some of this. This is a 71, Vancouver. I just wanted to go over this list with you. When I saw it, I was alarmed. I was really alarmed. This is Blake, missing since October 10th, 2021, from also Everett, Washington. He's white, 16 years old, 5'7", 250. Brown eyes, brown hair, uh, contact the same uh, Snohomish County Sheriff, right? So that's 13 or 14. Isaiah, missing from Vancouver, Washington, September 6, 2021. Black, 17 years old, 5'9", 215. Brown eyes, brown to black hair. Contact the Vancouver Police Department. Now we're at like 13 or 14, maybe. I don't remember. This one was 2019. She's 18, 5'2", 110. This one is a 93. This one was in 07, right? So like I said, we're not going to stop on all because now it gets a little bit better down here. This is a 95. Not that anything's better because they're still missing. And these ones have been missing for a long time. So it's 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 not better by any means. By no means. This is 2003. Right? So half of this list, um, that's where we're going to stop right there. Half of this list, is from 2021. That's pretty concerning, you guys. I'm telling you something's not right. I don't know if you would want me to look further into that or um, if you want to look into some of these other ones I didn't stop on um, because they weren't, you know, I slowed down on them, but um, I didn't read them like I read the others or or if there's anyone that stood out to you, let me know. Let me know in the comment section if there's anything I want to stop on. But um, I just figured since we're talking about this and it's in Yakima, we're talking about Washington and it came across this article, we're finding underground bunkers, that's concerning, some of them were in use, you've got disgusting like tools and things inside of them that 
just are not appropriate. That's concerning. And you've got all of these missing. Why are there so many missing? They're all teenage. They're all young. Right? So they all get in the young age when they were all taken and stuff. I'm, I don't know. I was just really worried about it. And I, I just wanted to bring that to your attention and let you guys know. It, it's got me worried. It's got me very, very worried. But anyway, so that was the, the update on Lucian, uh, plus plus a little bit of um, information on, on what's what else I found along the way. But um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. And I will be seeing you guys in another upload or another live coming up soon. Thank you for listening. I hope that you guys have a good one and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Take care, everyone.